Glory to God. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. All right. Good evening, everyone. All right. Good to see you, man of God. Good to see you, Caleb. Good to see you, Paige. Amen. Amen. Come on in. Amen. Great to see everybody tonight. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. 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 Good to see you, Caleb. Amen. Amen. All right, Paige. All right, Deacon Ashton, let me put my glasses on. All right, I see everybody popping, coming online. Amen, amen. Sister Roberts, amen. Glory to God. All right, Sister Kim, Alicia, amen. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Amen, amen. Come on in, we're going to talk a little bit. Ain't going to hold you long. You know, I don't take long, but I got to obey God. Amen. He put something on my heart that we got to share. So great to see everyone this evening. In fact, if you would, of course, if you don't mind, right there in the corner uh, of your screen there. If you would touch that share button and share that with some people tonight. I feel that what's going to be said tonight is going to be needed and necessary for a lot of lives. Amen. Good to see you. Good to see you, Deacon Beavers. Amen. Great to see everyone. Amen. Amen. Jemiah. Amen. Great to see you. Amen. Oh, great to have you online with us tonight. Amen. I want to thank God for this beautiful day. Of course, I know we've been having rain for the last few weeks, and and I believe, of course, the scientists have said that the rain has caused a lot of people to be depression, depressed rather. There's been a there's been a wave of depression and and oppression because of the weather. Amen. But I believe tonight God is breaking that not only in the natural with the change of the weather, but also with this word. Amen. Amen. God is moving by His Spirit. This is the season and the time to get online with God. This is the time to pursue God. Of course, I, uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, my message has changed. The title has changed two or three times. Amen. The Lord told me to talk about peace. Amen. I, I got, I got word this morning that, that there was a young man, uh, on the Ellen show that had committed suicide. Amen. I know we talked about this a little bit on Sunday, uh, regarding, of course, uh, suicide about people having what appears to be everything, um, people uh, 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 appearing to have been fed with a silver spoon, if you would. Amen. People having everything that they need in life, but yet and still, um, they focus on the thing or the things that they don't have, and it causes them to end their lives. And I'm hoping tonight, of course, in fact, I'm, I'm believing God tonight that anybody that has that type of oppression, that type of satanic stronghold, that type of attack, that's coming against their minds tonight. I'd like for you, of course, to share with them, but just, and you ain't got to tell them everything, but just let them know that your pastor, your man of God, amen, uh, you know, brother Wynn, whatever you want to call me, of course, and, you know, just go ahead and let them know to, to, to go ahead and share that so they can get, get, of course, um, that they can get plugged in as well. Amen. Amen. So if you would, of course, please tap the share button. Of course, um, you know, as I said earlier, uh, the young man, of course, committed suicide. And I talked a little bit on Sunday about this very thing, too. How the devil will get in your mind. And he wants to rob you of your peace. He wants to make you think that whatever negative circumstance that you're facing, he wants you to think that it's forever. He, he wants you to believe that God's word is not true. He, he wants you to think that your reason for existence is over. But ladies and gentlemen, as the, as the old Baptist preacher would say, just the fact that you was on a wake up list this morning. Amen. That the God still had you on the wake up call list this morning is an indication that God ain't through. Uh, just the fact that you're able to visit the hospital. Amen. And to leave on your own, on your own recognizance is an indication that God ain't through. Uh, just the fact that you can go to a funeral and you can view the body instead of being viewed is an indication that God is not through with you. There's more that he wants you to do. And I want to encourage you, amen. I want to encourage you tonight to use this season, this time that we have closing out this year. I think it's very, very, very important. In fact, I know it is. It's very urgent that we begin to pursue God's purpose for our lives. See, if you don't know, hear me now, if you don't know that you have a reason to live, then you ain't going to want to live. Let me say that again. If you don't, if you don't have a reason to live, then guess what? It's easy for you to take your life. But if you know that there are people 
counting on you. If you know that there's a purpose, there's a plan, there's a will, there's an assignment, there's a task, that, that there's a mission that you're supposed to accomplish before you check back into heaven, amen, then you would, you would then grab life by the horns and you would go forward irregardless of the circumstance. Amen. I, I want to talk tonight a little bit about the key to peace is pursuing God's purpose for your life. The key to peace is pursuing God's purpose. And I'm going to talk about how to maintain that, how to keep that peace. But, 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 but the biggest thing is this. Peace is gained when I pursue God's purpose. See, when I know that I'm doing God's purpose in my life, irregardless of the pain, irregardless of the problem, come what may, if I know, if I know, not everybody else, but if I know that I'm doing what God told me to do on a daily basis, then I have peace and confidence that God will always cause me to prevail. In fact, Romans 8.28 is one scripture we'll start with. Romans 8.28 says that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. When you are doing purpose, when you are allowing God's purpose to, to be formed in your life, when you are pursuing God's purpose, then God will cause everything to work together for good. You see, it's in the pursuit of purpose that you may encounter problems and circumstances and situations, but those things as they come under subjection to the pursuit of purpose, become merely life lessons along the way to, to, to help you to hone in and to, to help you to sharpen the skills and the abilities that God has given you in order to complete your assignment. Let me say that again. When you pursue God, amen, when you are seeking God and you encounter pains and problems, God will use those things to cause you to, to, cause you to enhance your skill set, amen, to, to increase, to sharpen your edge, so to speak. He, he will use those things to, to cause you to increase your ability and, 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 and increase your ability to do God's purpose for his kingdom here. On the earth, amen, amen. Open your Bibles to Psalms 57. Boy, I'm feeling good tonight. Psalms 57. Amen. And, 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 and while you're turning there, amen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read out the Amplified Bible. But of course, tonight I'm talking about peace. I'm talking about peace. Amen. I'm talking about peace, uh, that comes from doing your purpose. Amen. The greatest amount of peace is to know that while you're going through anything, is that you know that you're in the purpose and the plan of God. And, and a lot of people don't understand that you can go through problems and still be in God's plan. Amen. We ain't going to talk about that right now. But, but Paul said, uh, uh, Paul said over in the book of Acts, he said that though bonds and afflictions await me, he said, but yet I would not be moved, but I will finish my course with joy. We're going to talk about that some more in a minute. But the Lord told me first and foremost to share with you, amen, Psalms 57. In the Amplified, Psalm 57, and I'm going to read to you verses 1, 2, and 3. And I'm coming from the topic, of course. I'm talking about how to have peace, of course, how, how to maintain your peace, how to gain your peace. But the key to peace is being in pursuit of purpose. The, the key to having peace is knowing. See, real peace comes from knowing that I have peace with God and that I'm doing the will of God for my life. So I like this. Here, of course, when this is a psalm that, 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 that Paul, well, that, that, that David used when he was fleeing from Saul. Amen. David knew he was called to be king, but he also knew he had to honor the present king at that time in order for him to gain what God had for him. Amen. That's a whole other thing. See, some of you don't understand that in order to have peace, you got to follow peace with people that are over you and around you that can cause you to lose your peace or keep your peace. We talk about that in a minute too. Uh, don't, don't turn to it, but Hebrews, Hebrews 12, 14 says, follow peace with all men. And in other words, if at all possible, be at peace with everybody around you. And sometimes we don't have peace because we haven't chosen to have, we haven't chosen to have peace with other people. But at any rate, this particular, this particular psalm is when, is when Saul was, was jealous and he was pursuing, he was pursuing David. And, and so, so David knew that all he was doing is obeying God. See, one thing about purpose, your only responsibility is to obey God. 
See, when I'm doing purpose, the only thing I'm supposed to do is what God told me to do. I'm only wrong if I'm not doing what God told me to do. So therefore, real peace comes from me knowing that I'm doing what God told me to do. See, I can be in the midst of hell, but still be experiencing heaven on the inside because I know I'm doing what? God told me to do. And if you don't have the peace, if you don't have the heaven, if you're not experiencing the joy and the peace that you should be experiencing right now, then you're going to ask yourself, am I in purpose? Because when I'm on purpose, doing purpose, God is going to work his purpose through me and it of itself will give me peace. Amen. Let me read this. Psalm 57 and verse one. It says, be gracious to me, O God. Be gracious and merciful to me for my soul finds shelter and safety in you. I know a lot of people are going through different, different challenges and difficulties, but, but when you, but when you're seeking God, when you're pursuing God's purpose for your life, your soul will find shelter and safety in Him. See, God gotta take care of you because when you're doing what God said, you become God's responsibility. Let me read on. He says, and in the shadow of your wings, I take refuge and be confidently secure until destruction passes. In other words, even in the midst of the storm, God will sustain me. See, even in the midst of trouble, God will preserve me. And, and this is the beauty, this is the beauty about, about being on purpose. When you are experiencing pain and problems, while you are obeying God regarding your purpose, then God will always make sure that you are preserved and that you will prevail. Let me say that again. When you obey God and when you are doing what God told you to do regarding his purpose for your life, then what, though you may be experiencing pain and problems, God will always, hear me now, he will always preserve you. That means protect and sustain and, and, and cover you, but also you will always prevail. Amen. See, 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 my only responsibility, God's responsibility is me, but my responsibility is to make sure that I'm following him. We're going to talk about that some more. Let me read on. Let me read on. Verse number two. It says, I will cry to God most high, who accomplishes all things on my behalf, for he completes my purpose in his plan. That's Psalm 57. That's verse number two. It says, I will crack because see when I'm in purpose, I can talk to God real quick. I'm in proximity. See, see, when, when I'm in purpose, I'm in close proximity with God so I can speak to him. And he's going to hear me quickly. He's going to answer fast. Why? Because when I'm doing purpose, I'm also in his presence. Amen. It puts me in close proximity and therefore I can speak and he will respond quickly. And it says, I will cry to the most high God who accomplishes all things on my behalf for he completes my purpose in his plan. Boy, boy, boy. Woo wee. In fact, it says here, look at verse number three. It says, he will send from heaven. Woo, God will send whatever support I need. He will send whatever, whatever. He, he will send the forces of heaven to work on my behalf because I'm down here on his behalf doing his purpose. Amen. It says, he will send from heaven and save me. He calls to account him who tramples me down. I don't have to worry about enemies. Amen. That ain't my responsibility. My, my responsibility is to make sure I'm doing purpose. Amen. Amen. He said, he said, he calls to account him who tramples me down, Salah. And God will send out his loving kindness and his truth. Woo, glory to God. In other words, when you pursue purpose, God will preserve you and you will always prevail. But also, one of the key characteristics of pursuit of purpose is that you will have peace. Peace comes from knowing that irregardless of the circumstance that you are doing the will of God. Keep in mind, peace prevails when you know that the test or the trial is tied to your purpose. Let me say that again. Peace will prevail when you know that whatever test or trial that you are experiencing is tied to your purpose. Why? Because all you're doing is what God told you, unless, unless you know that, that you're doing something that God told you not to. 
Now, 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 here's some basic stuff. Now, y'all already know that true. Now, first of all, you got to have peace by being born again. Secondly, you get peace, of course, uh, by making sure you are repentant. In other words, there's no known sin going on in your life. You want to make sure you repent because when you repent, what you're doing is, is the word repent means to, to reposition yourself or reposition God in your life back to the priority of being number one. Amen. Amen. When you repent, you gain peace from that too. But then also there's another, another level of peace that comes from pursuing God's purpose. And this particular peace is it accompanies you in the midst of trials and tribulations. Another word for it, you can call it joy. Amen. Amen. It, it, it's almost like a form of joy. In fact, we're going to talk about that in a minute too, if time will prevail. Amen. So therefore, when, when I'm doing God's purpose, Peace will prevail even when I'm in a test or a trial because the test or the trial is tied to my purpose. And therefore, within the test or the trial, there are lessons that I'm learning in this. In other words, there are skill sets that are being honed. There are abilities that are being developed. There is a, there's a lesson plan that I'm learning in order for me to complete and do the task, amen, that he's called me to do. Ladies and gentlemen, in this season, I want to challenge you. It's going to be some up and ups and downs. It's going to be some challenges. I want to challenge you that in your, in your private time to spend time asking God for your purpose, to press in more so on God. What did you, what did you put me here for? In this season, the pursuit of purpose should be your priority. In fact, every time you run into a problem, let me, let me, let me show you something. Every time you run into a situation that's beyond you, that's uncomfortable, that's testing you, the first question, ask God, is it me or are you allowing it to happen? Because if it's me, show me what to do to get out of it. But if it's you allowing it to happen, then give me the lesson so I can learn it and get through it. Amen. Amen. So you want to make sure during the season that you are pursuing the purpose of God. That should be your priority. In fact, ask these questions. Watch this. Begin to ask God, why are you here for? Yeah. Yeah. What are you here for? Amen. Ask him again. So what are you? Begin to ask God, who? Are you here for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's time to find out. It's time to find out your purpose and your plan so that you have peace while you're processing into the transition of next year. Now, some of y'all, I know different people online right now, but Remnant Church, as y'all know, we're doing some shifting and changing. There are new people coming in. There's people taking positions. There's slots being available. God is moving and he's, he's setting things up for what he wants to do in next year. And so for that reason, you must be sensitive to what God is telling you about you so that you can get in on what God wants to do with you on next year. The old saints used to always say, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Whatever you, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, Lord, don't do it without me. So what you want to do in, in, in this season, in this season, you want to make sure that you're pursuing God's purpose for your life. You want to make sure that, that God is priority, that God, that pleasing God is priority in your life. But watch this. You should be always asking God, what am I here for? Hey, who, who am I responsible for? Who is my assignment? Amen. Amen. It's time to find out. Yes, sir. I'm going to look further. In fact, amen. Amen. You should make sure, yes, sir, that the places that you're going to are conducive to your purpose. In other words, the church you attend. Is that part of your purpose? Is the vision of that church congruent or conducive to the purpose that God has called you to? The place where you even neighborhoods and geographical locations. Ladies and gentlemen, all of these things are the uttermost important to God because these things are needed and necessary. These environments are needed and necessary in order for the seed sown in you for purpose to germinate and to grow. See, sometimes you can, you can have, yes, sir, you can have the right skill set and the right abilities, but be in the wrong place. Amen. You see, or you can be in the right place and have the wrong skills and so on. See, so you want to make sure that during this season, Lord, am I in the right place? Am I at the right job? This the right church? Am I connected to the, watch this, the right people? Make sure that within your circle that there are people that are conducive to your purpose. Are the people in your circle, if you're dating someone, is he or she, amen, is he or she conducive to God's plan and purpose for your life? Uh, if, 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 ask yourself, are the people that, that you spend time with outside of work, are they, are they drawing you closer to God or making you draw away from God? 
Because see, you want to make sure you have people in your circle that are cultivating you and that are causing you to grow into the things that God wants you to be. And by the way, sometimes God will use iron to sharpen iron. Oh boy. So I, I, I hear somebody saying, Lord, I, I, I don't think I'm supposed to be at this job because they mean to me. But ladies and gentlemen, sometimes God wants you to get over mean so he can use you for more. Now, let me say that again. So sometimes God wants you to get over mean folk so he can use you for more things. See, sometimes that's your development. See, see, you're getting the benefit. Yes, sir. See, we often, we often pay to go to school. But here's the beauty of God. He will use your job, bless you with the job, make sure you get paid at the job, but then use you, then, then use the job to train you to do his purpose. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look at this OJT. Look at his on the job training. Amen. Amen. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Open your Bible to Philippians chapter four. Y'all ready tonight? We just not starting. Philippians chapter four. We're going to jump in this thing. Yes, sir. I, I remember Martin Luther King said that if a, that, that if a man hasn't found something, hasn't found a reason to die, then he ain't fit to live. In other words, if you haven't discovered something more important than you and your four no more in your life, then ladies and gentlemen, I want to, man, woman, I want to tell you, you have yet, I want to tell you that you have yet to discover your purpose. Because your purpose is beyond your four and more. There's more to you than meets the eye. And this is why God is trying to draw more out of you. Amen. Amen. Now, now watch this. Now watch this. Now, now watch this. Now we're going to talk, let me shift this a little bit. Now I want to talk to you about the peace of God. Philippians 4 and 7. Amen. Go to Philippians 4 and 7. I think I'm going to go into the, I think I'm going to stay in the TPT, the uh, Passion Translation. Philippians chapter 4. This is blessed anybody. This is good. Somebody say it's good. Amen. Amen. Philippians. I like to, I, I like to, I, I like to hear some feedback. I can't, I can't hear much here. I, I got my little friend down here with me, but, uh, yeah, I don't think he understand what I'm saying. Amen. Philippians. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4. Now watch this. Philippians chapter 4. Because here's the big one too, see. Now, understand before we go into this, understand the devil wants to take you out before you find out God's plan and purpose for your life. The devil wants you to quit before you start. See, the devil wants, see, I remember, ladies and gentlemen, I remember, and I've been around for a minute. Uh, some of y'all know me from back in school days and high school days and so on and so forth. But I, I remember coming up, you know, in my, in my teens and twenties, Saying that if I get this house and get this car and live in this neighborhood and get that suit, even in my thirties, if I can, if I can gain this level of lifestyle, then I'm going to be okay. Only to find out that as I gained, as I got the car, that I, I realized that it didn't do much. Only to realize that, only to realize that, that once I got the house and once I got the trappings of what we call quote success, that I still wasn't happy. See, see your true peace. And your true satisfaction is only going to come from you fulfilling your God-given destiny. You will never be happy and you will never experience the ultimate joy and the ultimate fulfillment until you are doing the very thing that you are made to do. And hear me, friend, the thing that you are made to do is the thing that you're going to do the easiest and it's the thing that you're going to enjoy doing the most. Amen. And I know where everybody ain't called to, 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 to go to, to go to Africa. I thank God I am. I've been there and gonna go back. Love to have a great time there. I, everybody ain't called to go to India. That's all right. I do it. I, cause it's part of my personality, but somebody got to go to North Little Rock. Amen. Somebody got to go down the long note. Somebody got to go to home note. Amen. A -a amen. Amen. And, or somebody got to sell insurance and be a Christian. See, see, somebody got to be a principal of a high school and be a Christian. You see, so, 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 so understand, of course, that, 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 that your ultimate satisfaction. In fact, I said this on Sunday. True success, biblical success, godless success is not so much stuff. Success in God has to do with did you complete your assignment or your God given purpose? Did you do what God sent you here to do? Amen. Amen. So Paul, of course, and, and when you start doing what God sent you to do, you're going to find out that the devil is going to be mad at you. Now, he ain't going to like you. He's going to be angry because he don't want you doing purpose. In fact, the reason why some of y'all right now, he's fighting you so much because he don't want you to get too close to God. Amen. But, but, but watch this, watch this, watch this. So, so, so therefore, so therefore I gain peace when I'm pursuing God's purpose. I always gain peace when I'm pursuing God's purpose. When I ask God, not so much, not so much, um, give me, give me, give me, but more so, no, you give me what I'm supposed to have. 
Understand something. There's some things that God will move out the way in order for us to grow into him. There's some people that he will allow to, to transition in order for us, amen, to, to, in order for us to grow up and to mature. So, so at any rate, so watch this, watch this. So Paul, of course, having found out his will, having, having discovered the will of God in his life as being the apostle, one of the main apostles in, in, in writing, of course, the New Testament and being an example to all Christians all over the world, even to this day. But this particular writing in the book of Philippians, he was thrown in the jail. He was thrown in jail for preaching the gospel. He was thrown in, he was not thrown in jail, not just in the jail, but he was thrown in the dungeon. He was, he was in PC. Uh, he was in the, he was in the hole. Amen. They put him in the jail so deep mm -hmm. that the conditions were horrendous. But look at Paul. Look at Paul. Paul's attitude in the jail because keep in mind now, God has a way of taking the pain out of the problem when you're doing purpose. God, has, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, there is a supernatural peace that passes all understanding when you know that you know that you know you have talked to God and you're doing what he told you to do. Let me read the Bible. It says it better. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7. I'm going to read out the TPT. And it says this. It says, yes, I like this. Ah, really? Mm, yeah, it's a lot in this. Well, that's all right. I just read verse 7. We'll come back to the other ones. It says, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You see here, Philippians 4 and 7 in the TPT, in, 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 in the TPT translation, it says, Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. In other words, in other words, when you are doing God's purpose, hear me now, irregardless of the problem, irregardless of the pain, God will give you a supernatural sense of peace that passes all understanding. God will give you a sense of wholeness in him. He will give you a sense, a, 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 a sense of, a sense of peace and understanding that transcends, that transcends all your understanding. He, he give you a sense of, yes sir, he give you a sense of uh, sense of peace that just transcends human understanding. I've been through, some of y'all know, of course, I lost my wife this year. Um, of course, a uh, year before that, I lost mom. I lost my mother-in-law. Um, there's been, a, I can give you a laundry list of people close to me that have passed within the last two years of my life. And these people were people that were, you know, they were my circle. They were tight. These are moms and, 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 and so on and wives and so on. So, but, but nonetheless, of course, the amazing thing is that I find myself just full of joy and peace that just blows my mind. And I know what it is. It's the grace of God. I talked about that last week, last week. Cause one thing that God will give you while you're going through, he'll give you grace. And so therefore I knew that when I started going through that, Lord, I need some grace for this one. I knew in the morning I'd get up sometime and look like, Lord, I'm these grace today. Amen. Hey, I'm getting great. It's by grace right now that I'm speaking to you. Amen. But, but also let me show you also what Paul did in order to maintain this peace for God. Look up, if you will, go to verse number, go to verse number four of Philippians chapter. Yeah. Philippians four, four. Now watch this. Look what Paul did. Look what Paul did in order to maintain how to gain and how he maintained this sense of peace. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. In other words, what Paul learned to do, he learned to rejoice in the Lord. In fact, I like that. The, the TPT says, the, T, uh, the TPT version says, let me read it here. The TPT says, be cheerful with joyous celebration in every season of life. Let your joy overflow. I like that. I like that because it says, be cheerful and joyous with joyous celebration in every season of life. And you got to understand that life is seasonal. There's going to be some seasons up, seasons, it's going to be cold, it's going to be hot, it's going to be wet, it's going to be dry. And if you understand that going in, it'll help you to, to just keep flowing and going. You, you'll become more balanced, amen, and you'll be, you become consistent. Amen. And you walk with God because you understand that, that life has seasons. Amen. Amen. But, but, but I like this. He says, be cheerful. In other words, Paul learned how to have peace, have the peace of God 
is, is because he remained joyful. He maintained joy. Ladies and gentlemen, you gotta, you, it, 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 you have to choose to be joyful. You got to choose, and I preached it so many times, but you got to choose to be joyful. I like the fact that it says be cheerful. In other words, this is something that we can do ourselves. See, it's not a matter of waiting on the external circumstances to be cheerful. Now, we choose to be cheerful, and then God comes in with grace and makes us cheerful. See, a lot of times God's waiting on me to initiate the fruit of the Spirit or whatever the anointing that I need upon me at that time. God, init I initiate it by agreeing with God's word that I want that. That I, Lord, Lord, I thank you that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now I'm getting joy of the Lord. Amen. So, 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 so he found out that, that he can maintain peace with God by choosing joy always. Amen. King James says, rejoice in the Lord when? Always. Sometime? Nope. Part-time? Uh-uh. Always. In other words, good news, bad news, rejoice. Uh, bad days, good days, rejoice. Just choose to rejoice in the Lord. Amen. 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 It says rejoice in the Lord always. But also look at, look at the second thing that Paul learned. Look at Philippians chapter 4 and look at verse 6. Now watch this. I like this. I'm going to read I'm going to read King James first. Now watch this. This is how to maintain peace with God. He says, he says, he said, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Notice here, he says, he says, don't be full of care. See, see and, and ladies and gentlemen, the enemy's greatest weapon in, in getting people to quit, give up. And to, and, and to get depressed or suicidal, he wants to, he wants to bombard you with the cares of the world. Amen. Uh, Mark chapter four said, Jesus said that it's the cares of the world that the devil uses to snatch the word. If he can get you caught up in the cares of the world, he knows that it's a matter of time. He can wear you down. And over time, you'll give up and you'll quit. Amen. Don't turn to it, but Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 says that the devil uses, that the devil, that, that the devil tries to wear the saints down by filling them with care, by making you wonder about everything. Always try, you know, try to figure everything out. Now, figure out some things. It's good to be responsible. To, please don't, don't misunderstand me. But understand, why don't we just dwell on or seek the things that God tells us to seek? Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to, if you're going to, if you're going to investigate something, investigate how do I maintain joy? Investigate how do I maintain peace? If you're going to study some, hey, let's study how do I walk out God's purpose and God's plan for my life. Cause see, the devil wants you to be full of care. In fact, I like this in the TPT, in the TPT version, it says, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Hmm. That's something. He said, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. It says, be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith fear requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. In other words, give God the cares. Man, I do it every morning and I do it every night. And I said, Lord, this going on, that going on, this going on. I give it to him and then I let him have it. Amen. Amen. Now, does, does it come back? Sure. Oh, yeah. Does it come back? Of course it does. Does the devil try to? Of course it does. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But it's our responsibility. Amen. It's our responsibility to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. It's our responsibility that we diminish worry when we elevate the word. Let me say that again. We check worry. We diminish worry when we elevate the word. In other words, yes, sir. In other words, yes, sir. Go with me to a, go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm going to show you this right quick. Because the Lord told me also, and another scripture, of course, is, is that God will keep you in perfect peace if your mind has stayed on him. But let me, let me, I feel led to camp out on 1 Corinthians 10. Yes, sir. First, First Corinthians ten, Second Corinthians ten, yes sir. Second Corinthians ten and thirteen. Watch this, yes sir, yes sir. Watch this, watch this. Second Corinthians ten and verse thirteen. Now watch this. I'm, I'm reading King James first. It says, "Though we walk, though we walk in the flesh, 
we do not war after the flesh. In other words, though we walk in the flesh, we do not operate in the flesh. See, we are, see, we gotta remember, we are triune beings. We are spirit. We are spirit, souls, and bodies. So we are primarily spirit beings. Amen. Amen. That because we're on earth, we live in a physical body. And of course, in order to operate and to, and to, and to, to feel and sense the things in the earth realm, he gave us a soul, which compromises, which, 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 which involves our mind, our will, and our emotions. Amen. But, our spirit is primary. Our spirit is the one that, that, that guides us, leads us. Our spirit is the most important element and aspect of our lives. So it says here that, that though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Look at verse 14. He says, for the weapons, I'm sorry, verse 4. He said, for the weapons, 2 Corinthians 10.4. <laughs> Y'all remember 10.4? Amen. He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Mm. In fact, look at verse number five. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Notice here it's talking about thinking. Because see, the devil attacks you in your mind. The devil attacks you with thoughts. The devil wants, the devil is trying to steal your thought life. The devil wants to give you bad dreams. And he wants you to co-sign them. He wants you to believe that they're from God so that you can end up, so that you never cast it down, but you end up speaking it and then bringing it to pass. Oh man, I hear that. See, the devil uses the mind realm. Amen. He, he uses that mental realm. Yes, sir. To cause us to think negative hoping that we'll believe negative, then we'll start speaking negative, and then we'll have negative outcomes. But I love this. It says here, it says here, yes, sir, yes, sir. It says here in verse 5, casting down imaginations, because the devil is after your thought life. He's after your imagination. He 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 wants to, what's, what's imagination? He wants to affect the image in your mind. He wants, the devil wants you to get a shut up notice, and he wants you to stop thinking and imagining your lights cut off. And though the shut up notice is for another 30 days, two weeks or whatever, he will have you walking through the house acting like you ain't got no electricity. In fact, if you ain't careful, he have you down at Walmart buying candles. Amen. Hey, 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 hey. Have you down at Dollar General buying flashlight batteries? Hey, hey, you start planning for the negative thing instead of believing God for the positive. See, the devil is after your imagination. He, he, he wants to sow a seed in your mind of even sympathy. He, he wants you to take a shower and feel a little lump. Amen. He, he wants you to feel a little lump while you're taking the shower. And, and, and the thing about it, and the thing about it, you know, you feel a lump, you go, oh Lord. And the devil would, would all of a sudden start trying to, he, he'll run a reel for you. Amen. He, he, he'll start, he'll start, he'll start, he'll start running a movie in your imagination and he'll start going, now you remember so and so, your relative had that and she died. And, and so and so, you know, they, you know, they had that lump, they went and got it checked out. It was, ah, uh, yeah, it was cancer and they, they died and you know what happened? You, you probably got cancer. And next thing you know, he wants you to start saying you got cancer. See, the devil's trying to mess with your head. He, he wants your imagination. But this is why the Bible says here, it says to cast down imaginations. But watch this. But if I don't know that that negative mental image is coming from the devil, I will entertain it instead of casting it down. See, this is where, this is where your spirit got, this is where your spirit got to be stronger than your soul. You see, this is where, this is where your spirit man has to be more sensitive to the spirit of God than your soul is to the circumstances in the natural. Amen. Because see, if not, what you'll do, you start accepting everything good or bad as being from God. And the devil loves that because he has a playground with that. He, then he can make you think that there's no use in praying. Then he can make you think, Yes, sir. And there's no use in, in fasting and believing God. He said, just, he'll tell you, just live any old kind of way and, and, and just let God do what he want to do because God is God. And after all, God has everything in control. No, he don't. He don't have your thoughts in control. That's why he's telling you right now, he's giving us the authority to cast down imaginations. And watch this. First number five, he said, casting down imaginations and every high thing that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. 
What that mean? So what have God told you about you? See, some of y'all at, at the sound of my voice, God told you that you were rich. But the devil, the devil has sent, has sent circumstances your way that's trying to get you to imagine just the opposite. See, see, God would tell you that he's blessing you with a new home. But the devil will send, will, 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 let, will, will let you get eviction notices. And some of them be fake. But he'll cause your imagination to run wild, hoping to get you to confess something and say something. And thus activate something in your life that God doesn't want to happen. See, see, see the devil, the devil, the devil will bring, yes sir, the devil always uses contrary information to try to cancel out God's covenant blessings. Let me say that again. The devil will always use contrary information to try to cancel out God's covenant commitments. In other words, God said you're blessed. The devil wants to send stuff to your mailbox to make you think you're cursed. God says you heal. The devil wants to make sure that you that, that, that the lump you feeling and so on. He, he have you he have you down going crazy, thinking things, and, and you ain't even went to the doctor yet, but your mind on the went in some crazy places. Amen, amen. I, 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 let me tell y'all something on that. And one one of the, one of the tricks I've learned uh, whenever I feel a lump or a bump on my body, I, I've learned that when I, if I feel a lump right here. If I can feel it on this side too, then it's normal. <laughs> in, in other words, in other words, you find out that 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 a lot of things are just stuff the devil is trying to use to get you to co-sign and to accept his negative his negative agenda. See, John ten ten said Jesus said, "I came that you may have life and have life more abundantly." But Satan comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. What did he steal first? Your mind. See, you remember, remember, First Timothy says, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And the devil knows that if he can, if he can make your mind distorted, if he can get in your head and to get you to thinking things and, and considering things that are not godly, if he can get you to consider the opposite of what God said, the devil knows that now he has to see the doubt sown in. And because he has, has to see the doubt sown in, he knows that the chances of you carrying that thing out by faith has been minimized. Because now you've been entertaining doubt. You've been causing, you've been allowing your imagination to run wild. And this is where you catch it. Amen. At the beginning of the day or as soon as it happens. It says casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Now watch this. I like this. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. How do you maintain peace? You catch them thoughts, man, that's telling you it's over. Uh, uh You harness those thoughts telling you that it ain't going to work. Hey, you, you, you corral your mind. When, when, yes, sir. Hear me now. You always got more good things going on than bad. You are always better off than what you appear to be. And ladies and gentlemen, one thing I've learned, and, and, I, and I, I do it all the time, if you think you got it bad, and this is, this is the beautiful thing about being a preacher. If I can say this, some people may find it a little depressing, but hey, one of the good things about being a preacher I don't deal with people that's homeless. I had a, we've got somebody right now that's homeless. In fact, uh, somebody that's signed in my voice, we need a queen size box spring mattress uh, and some tables and a nightstand. Uh, there's a homeless person that we've been working with. I don't work, we've been working at the church. Um, that's not a member of our church, but she, but she needs, she just got an apartment. And now, of course, she needs some bedding and some other things to accommodate her. Now, anyhow, I had to go over there. And I, and I sat down in the apartment and I saw the conditions. And guess what? It made me come back home really appreciative. In other words, when you start doing your purpose and you start doing ministry, you understand that you are way, way better off than you than you than you think. See, a lot of times you don't get so complacent and, and comfortable in your environment, you ain't seen nothing else. Man, he said, I've been in Africa and I've seen some of the worst conditions known to mankind, but they just laughing and giggling and enjoying themselves. I've been in places where they haven't even heard of air conditioning. And it's 117 degrees and they laughing and just having a great time. Why? Because their mind, amen, is not caught up in that. Whew. Amen. Amen. So, so yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's my last scripture. And you ain't got to turn to it. Amen. But how do you maintain peace? How do I, how do I maintain peace? I maintain peace. Amen. We know this. We maintain peace by choosing joy. 
I maintain peace by pursuing God's purpose for my life. I maintain peace, amen. I maintain peace by choosing not to worry and not to get caught up in the cares of the world. But watch this, Isaiah 26, and I think it's Isaiah 26 and three says, you maintain peace. That, yes, sir, well, we just read it. It says that God will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. In other words, if your mind, how do you keep your mind on God? Always know that it could be worse. Always know that Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Always know that God is always with you. Amen. Always know that he always comes through. If you look at the win-loss record of God in your life, you will see more W's and L's. In fact, truth be told, if you see some L's, you see some losses, you know that it was something that you did or didn't do that God either told you to do and you didn't do it or God told you to do something or not to do something and you did it. Either way, God, God's record is perfect. And it says that, I, that, that God would keep me in perfect peace if my mind has stayed on him. Why? Because I trust in him. Ladies and gentlemen, I can go on and on tonight. I love this. Amen. I love talking about peace. But the greatest thing I want to, if I, if I can leave you with something, I want you to really, really understand that this is the season for you to find out what did God put you here to do. Your greatest peace is going to, is going to come from knowing what's your purpose, what's, what's God's plan for your life, at least to the degree of his purpose and his reasoning for putting you here. Spend time this season, hey, spend time this season asking the maker what he make you for. And spend time honing, as he show you in Gadget, spend time giving time to develop those skill sets and those abilities that are needed and necessary for you to carry out God, God's will for your life. Because one thing I've learned too, that when you discover your purpose, you'll find out that irregardless of the problem, that your purpose is always greater than your problem. You'll find out that if you just, if you just lean in on purpose, God will take care of your problems. You'll find out that as you pursue your purpose, God will preserve you and you will always prevail. Boy, I want to go some more, but I'm at the hole where I got. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Of course, as y'all know, yes, sir, as y'all know, this coming weekend on Sunday morning, we got our annual Christmas mall. Ladies and gentlemen, we have, we have free bicycles. Amen. We got free toys, free games. We got everything from air fryers to yard leaf blowers, everything from diapers to bedding, uh, everything from coats uh, to gloves, everything from electronic charging devices to, we got, we got books, we got some coloring books, we got, all, we got Bibles, we have a whole plethora of things, of course, and what I'm talking about is this coming Sunday morning at 10 o'clock at Remnant Church, we'll be having, uh, we'll be hosting our annual uh, Christmas free mall. And of course, there's going to be free food. There's going to be burgers and hot dogs. Of course, there's going to be some nachos. Amen. It's going to be some food, fun, and fellowship, and free gifts to everybody. So yeah, so 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 bring. And you don't have to be a member. You don't have to be a member of the church to attend. You know, you don't have to sow or give to do it. But we are asking you, Amen, to sow a seed as God leads. We are asking you, of course, to, to give. In fact, there are some expenses that we are incurring, such as some of the food items that we need to support on. So if you would, of course, you can give by way of Cash App. That's dollar sign Remnant C. Cash App Remnant C. Or you can give by way, you can give by way of Give Life, Give the Fire at Remnant Church Little Rock. That's Give the Fire at Remnant Church Little Rock. Or you can give, of course, by way of PayPal. And that's at remnantchurchlr at yahoo.com. Or you can go to our Facebook, or you can go to our, well, I think the link should be right there within the, within the, uh, within the thing. I know Alicia should have that up. I'm sure she does. But also, you can give by way of mailing your offering to 11715 Rainwood Road, Suite A1, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72212. That mailing address again is 11715. Rainwood Road, Suite A1, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72212. You can give by way of Cash App. That's dollar sign, Remnant, capital R, Remnant C, and you'll see Remnant Church there. And also you can give by way of Give Lafay at, at, 
at Remnant Church Little Rock. Amen. You can give by way of PayPal at RemnantLR at Yahoo.com. Amen. And of course, you can sow your seed, amen, by way of mail as well. So I want to encourage you, and I want to, I want, I want, I want to care, encourage you to shift your thinking from the problem to the purpose. Yes, sir. Stop in your prayer time. Stop being problem-minded and begin to be purpose-minded. Begin to ask God, what's the lesson I'm to learn from this? Um, you'll find that even some of the issues and problems that not only, yes, sir, not only will you gain peace in the midst of the problem, but also you'll gain understanding and God, and God will start changing your perspective. Amen. While you're in the problem. Amen. So that you can see it from a different angle and thus benefit from the problem in terms of learning and, and, and getting whatever the essence of the problem is that God may want you to get out of it. Amen. I'm not saying the problem came from God, by the way. The devil sends them. But remember, Romans 8, 28 said that, that God causes all things to work together for good. So whatever problem you're going through right now, God wants to make it to work together for you for your good as you do his purpose. So right now, I'm going to pray over you. Thank you so much for joining tonight. I appreciate you guys. But I want to bless you tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are giving, that you will multiply their seed sown. I pray, Father God, that those that are giving by the various means, that you will cause them to see an immediate return on that seed sown. I pray, Father God, that you will manifest your glory, that you will manifest prosperity, provision, and favor as they obey your voice in sowing those seeds. But also, Lord God, I pray for the entire audience, Father God, as well, that they may seek you for purpose. I pray, Father God, that even tonight, that you begin to speak to them privately and that you would begin to share with them your purpose, your will, and your plan for their lives. I pray, Father God, that you will manifest your glory upon them. I pray, Father God, that you will show them your good and perfect will for their lives. Father God, I pray that you may reveal to them their reason for being, their reason for living, that you, that you will cause them to be fulfilled in their purpose and that they will walk out and have your peace. Lord, I thank you that you will cause them to prevail and to be preserved because they have your peace because they're pursuing your purpose. And your purpose always involves helping people. That's it. That's my time for tonight. God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Share this video with somebody else that needs to be encouraged. Don't, don't give up. Don't quit. Get on your purpose. Amen. Get God's peace so you can do God's purpose. Amen. So thank you once more again. We're going to have a good time. Amen. This coming Sunday, it's going to be crazy. We're going to preach at 10 o'clock. Around 1030 or so, we're going to eat. We're going to have, we're going to ride bikes. We're going to play some ball. It's going to be fun, fun, fun for everybody. So God bless you. Tell a neighbor, tell a friend. Come on out this weekend. And thank you, Remnant Church. Thank you, Team Remnant, for your support. Thank you for your encouragement. And thank you also for your loyalty and dedication to this ministry. God bless you. Have a good evening. And I speak peace upon you that passes all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.